Welcome to Goldfish on Games, where today I'm looking at a single, and I've swiped on this looker. A single board Pentium 3, but the only question I've got for it is, can you game? This is the Rocky 3786 EVGU2. Yeah, it's a name that just rolls off the tongue, isn't it? And it seems to have been made by IEI. And I'm not sure when this was made or even how long it was in production, as published dates for the drivers are from around 2009, but some sites indicate it was made from 2013 to 19, which are all pretty late dates for a Pentium 3 computer. But if you're not aware, this is a single card computer, and these were designed for industrial applications, as pretty much everything you need to be a Pentium 3 machine is on this card. It has onboard graphics, sound, RAM, I.O. ports, it works. And it connects to a backplane that allows it to get access to other cards. As I mentioned, these tend to be used in industrial situations. But instead of controlling a bit of machinery, this is Goldfish on games, so instead we're going to put its gaming chops to the test. But first up, let's take a look at its specs, as the CPU is the Intel Pentium 3 S CPU, which is running at a whopping 1.4 GHz. This has been paired with 256MB of RAM, and there's a compact flash slot so I'm going to use a 16GB card, which will replace one of the secondary IDE channels based on jumper on the board. There's also two IDE connectors along with two SATA ports, so it is quite loaded with modern stuff, or at least far more modern than you'd expect with a Pentium 3. The graphics are provided by the Intel 815E chipset, so I'm not really expecting too much there. And it's also got the AC97 2.3 Realtek ALC655 codec for audio. So again, not expecting too much here. Unusually, this board has a built-in ATX power connector. So in theory, I could just run the board on its own. But I'm still going to use this backplane board, as it has multiple ISA slots that might be useful later. Hint, hint. Right now I don't have a case for it, as none of the ones that I had spare seemed right for this type of machine, which means it's just going to have to live on the desk. So what have I done so far? Well, just a few little bits. I've replaced the fan on the heatsink as the previous one was completely dead. The battery has been replaced for very obvious reasons. And I needed to make a cable to plug in both the keyboard and mouse. Now this might look a bit ugly, but it seems like many of the other parts on the board, the PS2 port wasn't fully standard, so a bit of hacking resulted in this cable, but I forgot to put the heat shrink on it before I soldered up the cables, and so we just used some tape, but it has resulted in both the keyboard and mouse working as expected. Windows 98 has been fully installed and it is working, and I even jumped through the hoops to get networking running. This was just to make it a bit easier to get software onto the machine, so I didn't have to keep pulling the card. And talking of software, I think it's time we put the machine through its paces. Starting with Unreal, as this was one of the system pushers at the time. And running it, it's obvious that this is having a few issues. Running the time demo indicates that we're averaging about 30 frames a second, but it doesn't always feel like that. Let's jump to DOS as I want to see how it will handle that. And what else can we try but Doom 2? And while this machine has obviously got the power to run it well, there is something missing. The music. I did manage to get the sound effects to work, but MIDI is a complete no-show. 
and it's even worse when we take a look at Duke Nukem 3D, as I couldn't get any audio to work with that at all, even with the exact same settings. So sound is definitely an issue when it comes to DOS. And jumping back to Windows, let's try out a few random games. So we can get a more overall idea of what the stock machine can do. Today in technology, all gunman troops are being armed with a new line of configurable weapons first pioneered by frontier inventors. Soldiers who volunteer to use prototype models in frontline situations give them high marks for their ability to adapt to the changing face of xenome warfare. Weapon packs are working. Keep your eyes open. And these tend to show a similar pattern. That it's pretty decent, but it is being held back by the onboard graphics. But that really wasn't all that unexpected as the i815 uses system RAM, so it always will be a bit limited. More so when you remember that this is an early 2000s Intel integrated GPU, and they were not known for being a powerhouse. And the sound card, while it worked fine for the Windows games, but there was a bit of noise there, and its lack of DOS support is definitely an issue. So let's try some upgrades. The first thing I want to upgrade is the sound, and I've had a card sat around that I've been wanting to try. It's the Audition 32. It has a Yamaha chipset that has an OPL3 inside of it, and should be fully Sound Blaster compatible. The setup is simple, just plug in the card, run the audio cable, and then we can either use the official drivers, or there's what I'm going to do, which is using Unisound to get the card up and running. That way there's no memory, resident drivers, or anything else that's required. And time to try out Doom again and... Ah... The music is back and sounds great. And it works just as well with Duke Nukem 3D. But there are some problems that I noticed. There's that weird pattern in the picture when audio is playing, which weirdly turned out to be the audio cable interfering with the KVM switch. It was easily solved, but there was also another issue, as every so often this card was hang on notes, which was something that this card shouldn't have done. I'm not sure if it's due to using Unisound to start it, or if there's an issue with this card, or just the general setup of all this. But for now, let's change to a Sound Blaster Vibra 16C. I really don't like this card, but it does work. And I don't even need to change anything in the autoexec.bat, as Unisound will boot this card as well. Graphics has to be next, but I don't think an ISA based solution is going to beat the onboard. So what are our options? Well, you might have noticed the extra connector that's at the back of this card. This is PCI, and if we use a PIC-MG backplane, then we can use PCI cards as well as ISAs. So let's switch this over. When it comes to picking a graphics card, our choices are far more limited than you might expect, as by this point most of the cards were AGP, and the PCI variants were sold in much lower numbers. And what I have is this, the ATI Radeon 7000 with 64MB of RAM. In theory, the ATI should be a clear winner, but let's run a few quick 3D Mark benchmarks just to be sure. And while these are running, I want to say that I was considering some other cards, but all I had was this and a Voodoo Banshee, but I couldn't get it to be correctly recognised by the system. But considering it has half the RAM of the Intel, and a quarter of the RAM of the ATI, 
I doubt it could have put up a very good showing outside of a few Glide games. And if I really want to play some 3DFX games, then I do have a spare Voodoo 1 card that I can daisy chain in. It also might have been nice to get a GeForce 2 MX or a later 3 or 4 card for the system, but finding PCI variants of those was getting very difficult, and extremely expensive. And the results are in. And the Radeon has easily twice the power of the onboard graphics. And this is with the Intel being on the internal AGP bus, where the ATI is being held back by PCI. So I think we all know what the configuration of this machine is going to be from now on. As between the ATI, the Sound Blaster and the 1.4GHz P3, we have a very capable gaming machine. And those games I showed running before are so much nicer now. Now I had managed to get myself a PCI NVIDIA FX 5500, but some combination of power draw, PCI setup and general compatibility meant that it wouldn't even post an image. Now these are the sorts of weird issues that crop up with these single board computers. I know the card works as I tested it on another machine, so it's definitely this setup that's the problem. And while I know the FX series wasn't the best cards around, even a low end one should have put in a pretty good showing, even on the PCI bus. But for now I'm quite happy with how the R7000 is doing. And here's an interesting thing, just take a look at the resolution options under Quake. On the stock machine it only had a very few number of them, with 320 by 240 being its max. It might have been possible to get more if I used the SciTech Display Doctor, but with the Radeon that's not needed, as I can pick some pretty high resolutions, which in software rendering is quite taxing. Now something that I hinted at before was how not standard some of the parts are. For example, it has these headers for USB 1 and 2. For 2, I think it's clear what the problem is here. The pitch of the pins is much lower than normal, so a regular connector won't fit. As for the USB 1 header, well the pins are all over the place really. Now I could try and find some of the original accessories, but I do have an alternative idea. Using a USB header splitter and a bracket, I should get it to work. But the need for USB is currently quite low, so I've really put it on the back burner. So the question is now, what's next for this machine? Well I'd like to try and get a nice industrial case for it, as it just sitting on the desk isn't really practical. And I also wouldn't mind wiring up the front panel, as having a hard drive light or having a power button that's not just dangling around would be a nice improvement. I also wouldn't mind checking out how a GeForce card would do with it as well. But to be honest, I really don't have that much of a plan. I got this randomly at car boot sale for cheap, and I just wanted to see what it could do. Uh oh, looks like another damaged ship. Whoa, Audrey! And I think we've seen it can do a lot. Stock, it could play a few games, if not all that well. But with the upgrades, it's turned into a really decent late 90s gaming machine. And it even handles DOS as well as Windows games. And I think this is where we're going to leave it. If you have any ideas of what we can do with the machine, such as upgrades, cases, or anything else, let me know down in the comments. And until next time, I was the Goldfish, that was doing stuff that its designers really weren't planning on it doing, and this was Goldfish on Games.
thanks for watching this video on this odd bit of kit. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I had making it. And if you did, then you might want to check out some of the other videos that I've made. Or you can use those buttons that YouTube makes us push as it lets them know that you enjoyed it. And it will also let you know when new videos come out.